great information for you today. And then we're going to hear from two hiring companies, Dexcom, uh, Monica's here, and ADP. We have Laura Lim and Pam are our speakers today. I will close it out um, for the last 10 minutes with a whole bunch of resources and information for you guys. So again, if you are just jump, uh, jumping on, we are doing a lot of conversation in um, the chat box. And so just go ahead and put in your industry, where you're calling in from, what city and state you're calling in from, and your LinkedIn URL. And make sure you are uh, on a clickable LinkedIn URL so we can connect right to you. All of you connect with each other. Our hiring companies are on the line. You can feel free to ask them questions uh, today. So uh, to get us started this morning, Jeff is here. He is the founder and CEO of Winning Wit is an author and former recruiter who specializes in helping individuals and organizations tell their stories to win the big moments in life. Jeff has coached hundreds of candidates on effective interviewing techniques, helping them land positions in finance, real estate, entertainment consulting, and host of other industries. He's a current re resident of Arlington, Virginia. Jeff still has a residual New York accent and is passionate about the subject of Pineapple on pizza. So, I'm there. Okay, can you please help me welcome Jeff Wolliner to our talk today? Well, thank you for that rousing introduction, Jessica. You make me sound a whole lot more impressive than I actually am. So I should just probably leave right now because this is going to be the high point of the entire morning. So. <laughs> but I, I truly want to thank you, Jessica. I want to thank Sheila. I want to thank everybody involved making this happen today. This is a true passion of mine, helping people get where they need to be in life and to truly win those big moments. So this morning, the goal is to get every one of you on this Zoom to a place where you feel comfortable knowing your own story, telling your own story, and then selling it to win that job. So I would love to kick this off in the chat. And I want you to think about your journey your personal journey, your professional journey, and if there's one word that jumps out to you that characterizes your story, what would that word be? Pop it in the chat. Let's see. <clears throat> Commitment, resilient, courageous. You can go ahead and take the mouse, Jeff. Okay. Love this. Endurance, ambitious, dedicated. Adventure. Passionate. This is good. I don't see any words like failure, loser. This is great. So we're off, to, we're off to a swimming start so far. Dedicated. Integrity. I like that one. Driven. Diverse. Advocating. Passionate. This is great. This is a great start. I love this. Endurance. Another one. So there's some themes that are starting to come up here. There's themes of endurance and there's themes of overcoming obstacles and there's themes of perseverance and dedication. This is excellent. This is such a good foundation. Filling, quality. Absolutely love this. Okay. So we're going to start by asking the same question now, rephrased. What is your story? How many times do we get this question? When we meet somebody at a networking event. In DC, it's very common. The first thing that somebody asks you is, what do you do? You don't just get it at a networking event here. You get it when you're barbecuing. You get it at the bowling alley. You get it at the bar. Everywhere you go in DC, you run into a stranger on the street. They bump into you. Somebody drops their bag of Chick-fil-A. They look at you. Oh, what do you do? It's just life here. And in a professional setting, that's pretty much life everywhere. But how do we actually answer that question? What do we actually say? How do, what do we tap into to answer that? Very often we don't have a good answer because it just kind of catches us off guard. So we give a title, say, what do you do? I'm an IT analyst. What do you do? I head up HR for a staffing company. What do you do? Drive truck. Awesome. Great profession. But what happens when you're in transition? How do you answer that question then? Suddenly that becomes a much more difficult question to answer. So when you're in transition and you get that question, how do you answer it? Let's, let's see it in the chat. What do you, somebody asks you right now, and if you're in transition, they say, what do you do? How do you answer that question?
you know, the answers aren't flying as easily as they were last time. This is a tough one. And that's okay. This is, this is meant to be tough. I work in healthcare. I'm a writer. Transitioning into the HR field. Take care of people. I like that. Barbie, I want to remember that one. I take care of people. I love that. Marketing professional. Create memorable experiences. Oh, that's good. Melissa, that's really good. Training consulting. I lead transformational supply chain projects. Looks like somebody has their LinkedIn headline they copied and pasted, which is excellent, which we're going to get to. Help organizations do good and do well. Fantastic. Improve patient lives through groundbreaking therapies and product solutions. Jana, awesome. So think about what themes are starting to emerge now. We're getting some titles, but we're really getting what we do, what we've done, and what impact we make. My friends, that is the essence of what our story is. So today we're going to dig into how do we actually remember the best parts of our story how do we package it in a way that the world can see whenever they click on our profile? And then how do we sell that story when we get called into that interview and stand out above all of our competitors? Now, first things first, are you the person with the best story? Because if you're getting called in for an interview, I'm gonna tell you something you already know. Other people are being called into. Now, I hate to be the one to tell the kids there's no Santa Claus, but that's the reality. You're, you're not the only person being interviewed. I know. It's awful. But it happens. And when it does, we have no idea who we're up against. Once in a great blue moon, we do. But for the most part, we're up against complete strangers. So when we're being asked those questions, we don't know how other people are answering. We don't know how we're stacking up to them. But here's one thing I can confidently tell you. And this is something you already know. Let's say there's eight people here who have made that kind of cut, or at least the, maybe the second round after the phone screens, those other seven people all have similar competencies to you when it comes to this job. The hiring manager is looking for a set of skills. And every one of these people who was invited for a phone screen, who passed the phone screen is now is moving on to this first Zoom interview, every one of them has similar competencies to you on, in a, within a broad range. So then it comes down to what is the great differentiator? Why you over them? And this is where your story becomes that key piece. Your story is what's gonna put you over the top. Now, quick question. Best player of all time, Jordan or LeBron? Let's see it in the chat. Okay, got, got a lot of MJ so far. We got, we got one LeBron, all right. Neither, don't care, okay. <laughs> all right, a lot of MJ, a lot of MJ, a lot of MJ, okay. Whole lot of MJ, that, that is not surprising. This tends to be a question that is generationally answered. Now, I want you to think about if you are the GM of an NBA team and you are interviewing somebody to join your roster, it's a fictional roster, and it takes place in an era where time has no meaning. And both Jordan and LeBron are both in their prime. And the GM is down to final two candidates to build a franchise around the greatest player ever, and the position is greatest player ever. And they're both asked to tell their stories. Now on paper, they have similar resumes. On paper, they both won multiple championships. On paper, they are both athletically dominant over all their peers. On paper, they are exceptional athletes. On paper, they are incredibly skilled. On paper, they're very, very similar. But here's the way they would tell their stories if they were asked. Start with LeBron. Say, LeBron, why should I bring you on to my roster to be the greatest player of all time and to lead us to the promised land as a team? And LeBron's story would go something like this. In high school, I was bigger, stronger, and more skilled than everybody. I dominated everybody. Then I got to the NBA, and I quickly dominated everybody in the NBA. And then I joined a team full of other superstars, and we dominated everybody there, too. And I have a shoe deal, and I'm a Hall of Famer. And that is LeBron's story. I go, okay. Makes the notes. Okay, 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 okay. And they ask the same question of MJ. So, Michael... Why should we bring you aboard? Why should you be the greatest of all time? His story would go a little different. His story would sound a little something like this. 
I grew up in Wilmington, North Carolina. I was cut from my high school team. My coach told me I had no heart. My coach told me I was never going to make it. My coach told me he's not somebody I wanted anywhere near this team. My teammates laughed at me when I got cut. And I still remember the sounds that laughter as I walked off the floor and didn't make the team that year. And I still remember the coach. And I still remember his voice telling me, you don't have what it takes. You have no heart. You have no guts. You're never going to make it. And I took that and I doubled down on my skill development. I doubled down on my time practicing. I doubled down on my commitment to this team and this school and our ability to win games. And not only did I make the team, became the best player in the state, got a scholarship, North Carolina, ended up hitting the game-winning shot to win the national championship in 1982. Then I was drafted in the NBA. And I was rookie of the year, and things were great for me. Then I got injured my sophomore year. Injured. I was, I was out almost all the year. Nobody remembered who I was anymore. They were talking about Magic Johnson, Larry Bird. Who's, who's this Michael Jordan guy? When I came back, I was determined now. Then I ran into Detroit, and Detroit dominated me. They dominated me physically, and they dominated me mentally, and I couldn't get over that hump. And every year, I walked home with disappointment. And my team couldn't get it done. So everyone kept saying, same thing I heard in high school. This kid's got no heart. He's not good enough. Yeah, he can put the ball in the basket, but he's not a winner. He's not a real winner. But I decided to double down on my leadership abilities. I decided to double down on my skill set. I decided to hit the weight room harder. I said, you're never going to push me around again. And I'm going to make my teammates better. And in 91, we came back. Not only did we win, we beat Detroit, our nemesis, and we swept them. We won the championship. And then we won two more. And then I retired. And people said, he's done. That's it. And I came back from retirement. And people said I was washed up. And I won three more championships because I was determined determined to etch my legacy as the greatest of all time. Now, if I'm that GM and I'm hearing these two stories, who do I want on my team and why? Let's see it in the comments. If you're that GM and you hear these two stories, you tell me who are you gonna hire and why are you gonna hire them? Why are you gonna bring them on your team? Why are you gonna build your franchise around that individual? Yep, MJ, persistence, resilience, tenacity. Determination, heart, dedication. Failed 26 times at critical moments, but the failure did not define who he was, and he learned from each time. He wasn't born with it. He worked for it. Ah, Lori made an emotional connection with a story. And he had a tenacity and skill you can't train or buy. It's not innate. He built it. Set an example for everybody else. Persevere through adversity. Impassioned. Notice the themes that are coming up now. Notice the themes and the responses here. And notice the themes that come back to this story. Now I want you to think about yourself. And I want you to think about a competitor. It's down to the two of you for this job. It could be a director of IT sales. It could be VP of human resources. It could be anything. It's you and somebody else who have a comparable skill set. You check almost every box concurrently right next to each other. That hiring manager has got a whale of a time deciding between the two of you. Think about who is going to tell the story closest to Michael Jordan and who's going to tell the story closest to LeBron. Now, this is to take nothing away from LeBron and what he's been able to accomplish, but the level of fighting through adversity the level of accomplishment, but not just accomplishment, but accomplishment relative to the challenge that had to be overcome to reach that accomplishment. That's the secret sauce of a great, great story. That's a compelling story. You know how we know that? Because think about every story we've ever been told in our lives that have mattered to us. Think about every single TED Talk you've ever seen. It always comes down to overcoming some challenge, overcoming some adversity, growth through that challenge, growth through that adversity, and that accomplishment against the backdrop of that adversity. So this is how we're going to get into your story. And this is the path. We're going to know your story. We're going to dig into how do you actually discover what your story is? How do you tell the story the way MJ told it? And how do you sell it? How do you close? 
how do you use this story to get where you want to be? Okay, number one, know your story. And this comes back to, who are you? What do you do? Like, I don't know, what do I do? <laughs> Something here, there, anywhere? I've, I've done a few things. It, our minds get scattered when we get this question, particularly in an interview setting. Am I right? If you've been just freaked before, if you've gotten this question and you're, just, you're all over the place and you're trying to couple well, here, here, and it, it's just big, it's like a tornado in a junkyard. It's just absolute insanity and you don't know what's happening. There's all these different things going on. Here's the way, my friends, to dig into your own story. What is your highlight reel? Now, you can tell I love basketball. Played in high school, love it. I love referring to basketball. To me, basketball is just a great metaphor for all of life. And I tried to pitch myself to colleges and I got a highlight reel of, of all the things that I did in high school. And all the coaches went, wow, this guy sucks and threw it out. So don't use me as an example. <laughs> but truly a highlight reel is what is going to set you apart from your competitors. Now let's actually dig into this. How do we get into what your highlight reel is? Number one, what have you overcome? I want you to go back through your resume and really think about the challenges that have happened every single stop on the tour. So often on our resumes, we showcase what we've done. I sold X amount to X amount. This was my sales process, this is what I did. I help medical devices get to the next generation through testing and this, that, and the other. I did this, I did this, I did this, I did that. It's almost all of our resumes are based on tasks and what we've done. And a lot of them are based on accomplishments too. But so few resumes that I've seen over the years actually dig into what were the challenges that had to be overcome in order to achieve that thing. What have you scaled? What mountains have you climbed? What have you defeated that felt insurmountable in that job to get you to this place? My first challenge to you is to go back through your resume and to go to the different organizations that you've worked for. What challenges did those organizations have that you stepped into? If you were in a sales role, what perhaps training gap existed for the sales team that you had to overcome? If you were a sales trainer, what processes did you have to put in place to get people to a level where you started hitting your quota as a team? If you're in human resources, what organizational challenges did you step into? Was the right hand not talking to the left? HR folks, don't tell me that's not happened before. What did you have to overcome in order to achieve this level of retention now that you're showcasing as somebody in HR? What did you have to overcome in terms of a broken sales process to achieve this level of outperforming quota that you've done in sales? Because if you show what you've overcome, then you transition to what have you achieved? And suddenly those achievements look a whole lot more impressive than they did five minutes ago with that same resume. So that is the first challenge you give to every one of you when you're trying to uncover what your own story looks like. What challenges have you overcome? What difficulties have you scaled? And then how did you scale them into achievement? Because that, my friends, is a compelling story. That is something people listen to. That is something people internalize. Now, in the chat, if you are a hiring manager and somebody tells you a story of adversity and then achievement in a resume, we're not even getting to the interview yet, just the resume alone, what is that telling you about this person versus the other resumes that you're looking at? Humility, yep, know how to solve problems successfully. Good selling skills. Mindset, yes. This is not somebody who quits. This is not somebody who mails it in. Not afraid to attack the problem. Care more about them than, than just themselves. They're able to quantify their achievements. Christopher, I love that. They're dedicated and know how to persevere. They have empathy. Yep, they bring other people along for the ride. This is another one too. 
They're thinking, what kind of a teammate can you be? Are you able to self-reflect? Manage change and adaptable. You don't have a victim mentality. Absolutely, can overcome tough situations. How big is self-reflection? How big is the ability to adapt in 2020? Think about all the people who are gonna be looking to hire you this year and how much upheaval their organization has probably been through. This thing came like a sucker punch to all of us and everybody in the world on some level is still in a bit of a daze right now and trying to get back on their feet. So the ability to show that you can handle adversity and get through that is gonna put you way ahead of your competitors who aren't even going to broach that. So when we think about what is your story, how do we actually bake this into the cake of how you tell it? So applicant tracking system, this is actually a great question and this, I would say this particular aspect of it wouldn't really be kind of the gaming the ATS part of the job search, but I would leave, I'm gonna leave that to the, uh, any of the recruiters who are in line who would wanna chime in on this and, and answer that. Because that is an excellent question. And then, you know, ATS is always that, you gotta get past the gatekeeper before any of this matters, right? So I'll let uh, one of the recruiters wants to jump in and address that in the chat. Excellent question. And Jana, thank you for, for broaching that. But what I want you all to think about in the meantime, well, uh, before we get to that, is think about your story now as a whole. Think about when you tell your story, you are somebody who scaled a problem and got to the other side. That is the essence of your story. That is the core. That is the heartbeat of your story. Now, how do we tell this story in a way that everybody can see? And this comes down to your online presence. Because if we wait just until we get interviewed to tell the story, there's a good chance it's not gonna be told as often as you'd like. Because think about how many eyeballs are on your LinkedIn profile versus how many actual interviews you're gonna get. The ratio is, is this to this. So if we wait till the interview, we're only telling our story here. Ultimately, we want to tell our story here because that is what's going to get us to here. And it all starts with your headline. Now, here are two examples that I like to use. And some of you are already way ahead of the game on this. Now we come down to how do you tell your story in a way where it makes sense to the person reading it? And the person reading it says, you know what? I want this story to make my story happy. Because at the end of the day, people only care about your story insofar as it can help them. This is the essence of sales. This is the essence of life. You know, one of the metaphors that I love to use for this is, is think, about, think about dating. And on a dating profile, people will be very clear about the different qualities they're looking for. You know, they, they, if somebody is looking for somebody to, you know, be around their kids, they say, you know, I want somebody who is great with kids. And if you're, if you're, they go out and meet for coffee, they're going to ask a question about that. And you can tell all the great qualities that you have, but ultimately that's what they're looking for the most. And if you're somebody who happens to love kids, this is a great thing to bring up. But if you don't bring it up at all, they're never going to know. And there's going to be a huge disconnect. Same thing with your story and the same thing with the jobs that you're going for. So let's say, and I see, I know a couple of you are looking to transition into different careers. And that's, that's awesome. But if you only, let's say you are in, and I keep going back to sales and HR just because they're easy to talk about. But if you are in sales and you're looking to transition to HR, if everything on your resume and if everything on your LinkedIn profile only talks about very sales specific things, you're going to have a hard time connecting with a hiring manager who's looking for somebody who's going to be effective in HR. So how do you put a headline in on your LinkedIn profile that speaks to everyone who's looking to bring you on board in roles that you want to pursue? In the chat, let's jump in. What headline do you have? So we have the one here on the top, training and development professional with experience in organizational development, pretty broad. Whereas here, I help your organization build great teams. Tell me in the chat what the fundamental difference is between these two. 
you are. Mm -hmm. Yep. This is the magic word. It's the magic word of all of life. Your personal it speaks to how you can help them. It's clear, it's actionable, it ties into their benefit. Yes, action driven, benefit to the reader. Oh, that's not good. Let's go back. We, little, uh, okay. All right, we'll get to all this good stuff in a second. Very specific, connects with the person reading it. Ultimately, the person reading this is gonna, what's the question everybody reads? What's the question everybody asks when they're reading your profile? What is that one question everybody asks? Yep, Dion's got it. What's in it for me? You guys got this, what's in it for me? So if somebody is reading your profile, they're not doing it because they're bored. Actually, maybe they are, and if that's the case, they're probably in the, the wrong line of work. But if they're reading your profile, they're reading it because this is somebody they're looking at to hire. They're looking at you as a prospect. They found your profile on LinkedIn. The first question they're gonna ask themselves is, what is in it for me? Who is this and what can they do for me? Exactly right, Lisa. This first, this first one here doesn't really tell me that. Clearly, I have to read between the lines here. I have to look at this and say, well, I'll experience organizational development, okay, but I mean, are, they, are they good? Are they effective? What do they do for me? This tells me right out of the gate. I help your organization build great teams. So the next challenge I have is to go back to your headline and see how can you sum up your story in one line? How does that story get shrunk down into one line that tells that person what you can do for them? What I would love is if some of you in the chat can write in what your headline is. Or if you don't have a headline, write what you think your headline could be. There's no right or wrong answers to this one. The good thing is I don't know you, so I can't really judge it. <laughs> Neither can the rest of us. So you've got a blank slate here. I know a couple of you did it early on in the chat. Okay, this is a good one. So empowering UK subject matter uh, uh, leaders reduce stress, improve corporate well-being, build sustainable, resilient leadership and agile teams during crisis. I save you millions of supply chain costs. Second makes you think of a gimmicky sales pitch, doesn't draw me in, puts me on guard and said, okay, all right. Then uh, Linda said, leverage the power of innovation to transform customer experiences through use of digital tools, data, and collaboration, and make miracles happen. All right. I inspire teams to share a vision and celebrate victories. I build relationships and solve problems. Passionate advocate for healthcare compliance, ethics, and quality improvement. Great, Lisa, my, my question would be, how can you but I love the word passionate. Passion is great. It says, okay, you love what you do. That's, that's a win right out of the gate. How can you change that to what can you do for them? What do you do for their company specifically? Leandra, I help your company to grow finding new customers that believe that your products really can help them. Penny, eliminate pain points and calm the chaos for senior business leaders. It's good stuff. Speaking right to the emotions. Right to the heart. Excellent. So your headline is really going to accomplish one of two things here. You can do it this way. I help your organization build great teams. So it tells them kind of directly what you do. Um, and then a lot of times they're going to look at that and say, well, I, I want to know more. Okay. You, you, it's, it, you can say that. And then to Wendy's point, some people can look at that and say, well, okay, maybe, maybe a little gimmicky, right? Like how, how do I know that's actually true? But even if you think it's a little gimmicky, if nothing else, it at least stirs the mind to say, well, let me, let me at least take a look at their profile to see if, if this backs up, if the talk, if they can walk the talk, you know, if they can, if their experience shows me this person actually has some gravitas to their resume and to their experience. And often it will draw the eyeballs down to where you want them to go. And that's all this is, it's the hook, it's the sales hook. I help your organization build great teams. So for instance, if you are going for a role in organizational development, this is ultimately what they're hiring you for. They want you to build great teams in the organization. And you're telling them flat out, hey, this is what I do. This is my story in one line. Now, how do we get an emotional visual behind it? This comes down to your banner. Princey is somebody I absolutely love to follow on LinkedIn. 
absolutely awesome, awesome, awesome content. And if you have an opportunity, I would recommend following this gentleman on LinkedIn. Every day there's something, there's something pithy, there's something direct, there is something useful, there's something enlightening. It's just really, really good stuff. Right out of the gate, spoken word artist. It's clear what he does. But look at this banner now. What does this banner invoke in you? What kind of emotions does this banner bring out? And think about his target audience. His target audience are people who would hire him to be a speaker. What does that banner tell you? Inspiration, energy. Engaged audience, hands up. Yep, absolutely. People, people are digging it, they're into this. Like, okay, okay, I want more. Motivational leader. People are hanging on his every word. This is a great emotive banner because in one banner, without even going to the rest of the profile, I already feel what he does and I already feel the impact that he's making. The vast majority of decisions, I mean, a vast, vast, vast majority of decisions are done back here in our primal brain and our emotional brain. And that includes hiring decisions. We love to believe that it isn't. You love to think, well, of course they're gonna hire me. I check every box, this and that, and I, and I, I told them exactly what I did here and what I did here. No, 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 no. People choose emotionally. They, they feel what you're gonna do for the organization. There's a lot of really cool studies on this. I'd encourage you all to connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm happy to share any of them with you. And Sharon makes a good point. This job lives itself to the photo. What about other jobs? Great, great, great question. So think about what you do and think about what kind of a banner you can have that will draw out the emotion of what you're trying to get across. Fiverr is a great website to get this done very inexpensively. There are a lot of people on Fiverr who can build you a custom LinkedIn banner based on what you do. So what I would do if you want to get a really good banner is go on, if you don't, if you don't have a photo that shows kind of what you do, then you can get one developed on Fiverr that can show you if you're in sales, it can show you like, like on the phone, it can, it can sh shop these things a hundred different ways. They can show happy customers. They can show anything that you want them to show in a banner. And I'll put it in, I'll put it in the chat right here. I don't know why my cats are on right now. That's weird. So fiverr.com. No, sorry, I was said privately. <laughs> you know, it's funny, no matter how many of these I do, you never quite get comfortable with it. I'm just used to these live audiences. So knock on wood, we'll get that back sooner than later. Fiverr.com, you can do this. I mean, you can get this done for really honestly as low as like 15 or $20. And it can, it can be pretty high quality. So I would check it out. Try to get a banner done because, again, what are we talking about here? Differentiation, storytelling. You want the person who is looking at you versus looking at other candidates to have differentiators every step of the way and not just in the final interview process, before they even proactively reach out to you. And this goes for recruiters too. You want recruiters to be drawn to your profile. You want recruiters to look at your profile and say, this is somebody I have to reach out to. This is not, this is not an if, this is a, a must. So a great banner is a great way to do that. Now you're about section. This is where I would encourage all of you to tell the core of your story. But to tell the story in such a way where you now are helping them solve a problem, where the story of what you do becomes apparent and the problem you can solve for them. Yeah, so just, just come back for a second. So Sharon's asking, uh, as a marketer, can I show myself collaborating? I don't know how they would do that. The end result, definitely. Look at pictures of collaboration. See if they can, and a lot of times they'll give you different prints and different proofs that you can check out and you can see, I like this better than the other. I would say that a good best practice to really focus on for a banner would be something that just invokes some kind of emotion that you're trying to get across. An emotion of, of what you bring to the table and why you're gonna make life at that organization better if they bring you on board. And this is this segues beautifully into our about section. So, Gav Gillibrand is somebody that I follow and, you know, a yeah, great headline. I help busy people lose 20 pounds or more in 12 weeks or less without cutting carbs and other fun stuff. That speaks to my soul. That's great. So, like, I don't have to give up. Like, we have a wine membership. We don't have to give that up. Awesome. 
I just had pizza yesterday. Don't have to give that up either. Even better. Life is grand. This guy's going to help me. This is just awesome. So when, and then to Rich's point too, uh, piercing marketing is already a successful career. It's not in a job search or transition. And that, that's a very good point. So Rich, what I would say to that is this is where I would encourage everybody to start thinking about yourselves in an entrepreneurial sense on LinkedIn. And this is another differentiator between looking for something on LinkedIn as a job seeker and looking for something on LinkedIn as an entrepreneur. And, and I'm sure the recruiters can speak to this and, and please feel free to chime in in the chat. I'd love to get your perspective on this too. The, the most active people on LinkedIn outside of recruiters are entrepreneurs. They're the ones that have the most built up profiles or the ones that have the most multimedia presence. They're the ones who have the most connections, the most activity, the most followers, but there's no reason for that to be. In fact, as a job seeker, if you can position yourself as that kind of entrepreneurial job seeker, as somebody who shows your expertise, as somebody, somebody who shows what you deliver in terms of content, you are going to ultimately set yourself apart from everybody else out there. And we're going to get into this in a second. So Rich, thank you so much for that comment. This is going to be awesome in terms of what we can, what we can help you guys do. So think about how Gav puts the story out there. Now, normally when we have the about section, what do we see? We see folks who will put, you know, um, experienced sales professional with 10 plus years selling digital products to, you know, this, you know, sales cycle, this, and it'll be very technical stuff. We see this in almost every about section on a LinkedIn profile, particularly for folks who work for companies, folks who are in transition. This is a very, very common thing. And I don't say this to rag on anybody because everybody does this. This is where... We're going to help you guys be a little bit different and, and take that next step up and differentiate yourselves. Well, let's first see if we can ask a rhetorical question that companies struggle with. Have you ever lost weight and put it right back on again? Now, that's not for a company, that's for an individual. Have you tried everything? But still, still seem to be beating your head against the wall. What you're trying to do here is to get the person reading it to go, mm-hmm, uh-huh, yeah, uh-huh, yeah, absolutely, no doubt about it. What's a question you can ask to a prospective employer or a prospective company about a problem they have that you know you can solve? Let's see it in the chat. What, what question do you think you can ask that you know you're going to get somebody nodding and going, uh-huh, yep. I can't wait to see the answers here. I know there's, I know there's going to be some good ones. Mary was asking, uh, does Fiverr help you identify what kind of picture will best describe what you want based on the feelings? Yes, I would make that really clear to the person who's developing your banner, like super clear to them. All right, so Penny, great one. So have you ever needed to be in two places at the same time? Has your sales team ever been sitting in the wrong conference room? Like, uh-huh, uh-huh, yep. And Judy, what is the greatest challenge you're facing during this pandemic? Okay. Have you ever thought about a new job, a career? Jessica, love it. Oh, how would you feel if you have one effective tool that you can develop your leadership skills, manage your stress, and improve corporate well-being? Like, I feel really good. Tell me more. This is great. We're asking the right kind of questions here. We're asking questions that get people nodding. Have you ever not met the regulatory requirements in a healthcare audit? Lisa, I know a whole lot of people are going to be looking at that going, uh-huh. Yep. Do you need to connect with clients older than 22, Mark? Yep, absolutely. Yep, 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 yes to all of this. So now that you've got them hooked with this question, well, that's where I come in. Now you are giving them the solution to their problem right out of the gate. And after you give them the solution to the problem, you tell them how you're going to solve it. Okay. The guy's saying, I help busy, stressed men and women that don't have the time to cook and prepare food all day long lose 20 pounds without doing all this. And now he's going to tell you how to do it. And this is where green check marks are excellent. Excellent in an about section. Because they draw your eyes away from just a whole lot of text into some bullets now. Now this is where you're going to tell them bullet by bullet by bullet exactly how you're going to do it. You're going to ask them about this question, about this burning problem that they have. 
They're gonna nod along, yes, I have this burning problem. You're gonna tell them, I'm the one to solve it for you. And now you're gonna tell them, this is how I solve it. This is what I do as a professional in this field to solve your problem. Boom, boom, boom. And then you can give a little bit more info down here. When it comes to losing weight, I want you to know results and I want you to have them fast. At the moment, you just don't know how to do this. I understand firsthand, and this is where you want some empathy to come in at the end. You want them to understand you're not just looking for a job. You're looking to solve their problem. And why are you looking to solve their problem? Because you get it. You get what they're going through because this is your industry. This is what you've done. This is your experience. This is your story. What were we talking about before? Your story. You've overcome adversity. Where's the adversity? Right up here. What you're doing in your own story is talking about your adversity and how you've overcome it. Your adversity and your achievements. Adversity, achievements. And this is the how. Key points you're going to be adding all throughout this. And then the empathy. Empathy is everything. Because why is empathy super important down here? You see it in the chat. Why, why is it really important that, that Gav put this down here? I understand firsthand how confusing and overwhelming the fitness industry can be. Gets buy-in, yep. How can you help if you don't feel their pain? That's right. Yes, Sarah, creates connection. Creates connection. Emotional part of the brain, Dion, 100%. Emotion, yes. You are now connecting with somebody before you even had a chance to meet them, before you even had a chance to be contacted by them on LinkedIn. There's already an emotional connection because this person's now reading it, saying this person, this person gets it. This person knows what I'm dealing with in my job. This person knows what my company needs. I'm a recruiter. This person knows the pain point that my company or my client has right now. They viscerally understand it. And then call to action after you have that empathy. So, okay, like there's a connection to this now. This person like gets what I'm going through. They're the solution to the problem. So schedule a call with me today. Reach out to me today. Put your email address down there. Put your contact info there. Send me a DM. Implore them to reach out to you. There's something so powerful about a call to action. And all of these are sales techniques that entrepreneurs use. But every single one of you right now is in the middle of a sales process and you're trying to attract clients and the clients in this case is an employer. And you're reaching out to them the same way a successful entrepreneur reaches out to their prospects. Identify their problem, let them know you're the one to solve it, let them know how you're gonna solve it, create an emotional connection and say, this is how we solve your problem. Schedule a call with me today. Send me an email today. Let's schedule a, a consultation today. Let's do this right now. And once you have that kind of buy-in, now they're going to want to know more about you. And this is where you get into the actual resume on your LinkedIn profile to continue telling your story. So these are, these are awesome. I love these. I love the, the pointing fingers. These are great. It draws the eyes to the bullet points of what you've done. The reason I'm, I'm focusing on Shara here, aside from the fact that she's awesome, I mean, that helps, but I love the way that her profile is laid out. I love the way that her experience, particularly in this hospital in Philly is laid out. Think about what we talked about before with diversity and accomplishments. Diversity and accomplishments. Why is what Shara does so important in terms of what it produced? Let's see here. So in a subacute setting, I managed 25 to 30 patients. Metrics, metrics are good. Everyone loves metrics. Providing reliable psychotherapeutic care, both as an individual and group basis. Specialty was treating the most vulnerable populations. Right there, most vulnerable populations, this is, this is a challenge. Not everybody in this field works with the most vulnerable populations. Shara's letting you know right out of the gate that she has. And now, I have many accomplishments during this role that show my expertise. Now, here is where we're getting the story, what Shara's done here. Through obtaining this, I facilitated the creation of, so now we have an achievement. And what did the achievement do? Healing and recovery, which helped our long-term mentally ill patients deal with grief and loss. We're, now we're not just showcasing tasks, we're showcasing achievements. It's a great question 
by Christopher, and I'm so grateful, so grateful to have this question here. So how can you learn about a company's pain points if you don't have an inside lead? You can learn all about the pain points from the job description, because ultimately every single job posting is a pain point. It's something that they need done. They're, they're having a reorganization and they need somebody to come in here and do this. Their sales are lagging in this area, so they need someone to come in and sell this. Their organization is a mess and they need someone in HR to come in and do this. They have supply chain breakdowns all over the place, so they need somebody to come in and solidify it. And get, again, get the right hand talking to the left and get things back on track. In the job description, you're gonna learn those pain points because they're gonna, what, what is ultimately the bullet points in the job description? All the pain points. We need you to do this, this, that. The ideal person will have this many years experience doing this, 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 that, A, B, C, and D. A, B, C, and D are the pain points. So now how do you heal those pain points through your story? And assuming that Cheryl was gonna go for a job in behavioral health in a medical facility, this is how the story can be told. I have overcome this. I built a bridge between subacute hospital program and other mental health agencies. I built a strong treatment team by mentoring new therapists and independent contracts, as well as providing training to staff. This is breaking it down and it's telling the story that this was not an easy place to work and there were a lot of things that had to be done, but this is how she did them. And these were the outcomes of it. So that adversity and then achievement, adversity and then achievement. I'm getting a story by reading this right now. Now, the question is, who's listening to your story on LinkedIn? What do they say about if a tree falls in the woods and nobody's around, does anybody actually hear it? It's kind of like talking to your in-laws. Like you can talk as loud as you want, but nobody's actually listening. Who cares? So my question to you is, who's listening when you're telling your story on LinkedIn? Who's actually paying attention? Because you can have the greatest profile in the world. But if you don't have followers and connections, it doesn't matter. So here's how we remedy that. Now, I, this was something I did for a group in uh, South Carolina a few weeks back, and they were uh, training development professionals in transition. So, okay, how do you build your presence? So let's not boil the ocean out of the gate. Don't get me wrong. The more followers you have, the more connections, the better. But let's first start inside out. What is inside out? Let's start with the people who are most likely to hire you. The people who are in industries you're looking to work in, who are in geographic regions closest to yours. Now that doesn't matter as much as it used to, but it, it still matters more than it doesn't. So let's start with, with the example there. Let's first start with second connections. Go to the, the, the search bar up here and go to the advanced search, and then you'll see the filters. First, start with your second connection. So these are people who know people who you know, friends of friends, friend-in-laws. Click on an area. And this, for a lot of you, be the Valley of the Sun. So Phoenix, Arizona, click on it, so pop up right there, and then add an industry, whatever industry you're in. For them, it was professional training and coaching. For some of you, it'll be IT. For some of you, it'll be HR. For some of you, it'll be staffing. Whatever it is, click your industry, and then go to your search. And then a bunch of people are going to show up in your area who are in your industry. Connect, connect, connect. Reach out, send them a note. Just you want to connect. More people than not these days are accepting blind connections. Just connect, because guess what's going to happen now? You are slowly building the empire, and now you are building an audience for your activity. Now, some of you are active on LinkedIn. Seen this gentleman around, Joe Applebaum. He is everywhere on LinkedIn. Like, he is like omnipresent. Like there's like this idea of quantum physics where a particle can be in literally every place at once. That's Joe. Joe's literally at every place at once. And he has 30,000 followers. So I think he's doing a pretty decent job at it. Now, you don't have to be an entrepreneur to have this many followers. This is the great misconception. You don't have to be Joe. You can be you and have a lot of followers. What's the secret sauce? Right here. Joe replied to a comment. Joe commented. Joe replied to a comment. Joe commented. People often think that we have to come up with a ton of original content ourselves. We do. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, we do. But just as important is to comment on other people's stuff because that amplifies your profile to other people. If you comment on other people's activity, 
then other people who are viewing that post are going to want to connect with you. They're going to, I'm just going to go back quick for, uh, for Penny here, just to show the, uh, the filter. So, yep, just go up to search. And when you click on that, you'll be able to go to advanced, like advanced filters and click on that. And then you'll be able to see this. And then um, it's okay, Penny, we're going to be able to uh, see it afterwards because if I'm not mistaken, this is going to go out to the attendees, right? And then we'll have this, this archive. So you'll be able to see it again. This is really important to stay connected and to stay visible. The more visible you are, the more people are going to see your profile, the more recruiters are going to see your profile, the more hiring managers are going to see your profile. And this, my friends, is where activity becomes everything. The same way entrepreneurs have a content strategy on LinkedIn to tell your story, this is where you want a content strategy to tell your story. So posts. And not just posts about what you had for breakfast this morning. And I know it's going that way on LinkedIn. It's the Facebookization of LinkedIn is fully, fully underway. And you can partake in that here and there, which is not the worst idea. Again, it builds a visibility, just it creates rapport and connections, but it's good. But ultimately, your posts, you want your posts to be about your brand. You want your posts to be about something that matters to people who are reading it. So again, I'm going to come back to sales. If you have a Let's come back to your story. You have a story about you overcame the Great Recession and still managed to outperform your sales quota in 2009. This could be a message you send to everybody on LinkedIn. You put it as a post. I know all of you right now are dealing with a very difficult sales environment, but let me tell you a story about what I dealt with. 11 years ago during the Great Recession at another difficult sales time. This is what I was able to accomplish and this is what I did and this is how I did it. And then you hashtag it out, sales, sales enablement, sales training, sales, 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 get yourself out there. You're gonna see people commenting on it and then ask questions. What would you recommend in a difficult sales time? People are gonna comment on your stuff and guess who's gonna be looking at it now? The people you just connected with, the people who could potentially be hiring you in your industry. Because what are you doing now? You're positioning yourself as a thought leader. Thought leadership is everything on LinkedIn. So you post, you have comments, video. Not everyone's comfortable in front of the video. How many, okay, let's see in the chat. How many of you are actually comfortable on video? Like super comfortable, it's like making your own video, putting it out there and like, hey, what's up, here I am. Nope, <laughs> not so much. I can't, that would take a long time. Yep, uh huh, not so much. Yep. Uh huh, not very comfortable. Yeah, yeah, somewhat. Somewhat's an improvement. Lillian, I think you're, you're ahead of the game, I'm already doing somewhat. You don't have to do video. Video at this point is not nearly as powerful as it once was, but it helps to augment things. It just shows you in a different light, it shows your personality. If you, do, if you are comfortable on video, I would recommend making a video about what you're good at. A video with tips and tricks and helpful tools for other people in your industry. Just because you're not currently working does not mean you don't have any value. And if there's nothing else that anybody takes away from this today, please, please, please internalize that message because it's true. Just because you're not currently getting a paycheck at this moment in time does not mean that you do not have value as a professional or as a person. Because you do. You have a ton to offer this world. And my friends, this content strategy is a great way to show that. This is a way to show people that just because I'm between jobs right now doesn't mean I forgot everything that I learned. Doesn't mean my story suddenly got washed away with the tide. This is what I'm all about. And if you're comfortable writing, articles are a great way to do it too. The publishing tool on LinkedIn is awesome. So think about different topics. Think about what's happening in the world right now. There's a few things in the headlines, yeah? I mean, it's, it's not been too slow of a news cycle, right? Think about how that relates to what you do for a living. Think about how that relates to what you do for your career. Write a post about how COVID-19 has impacted sales in your industry. Write a post about what the social movement, what, in, what impact that's having on human resources and hiring. You have a lot to offer about what's happening in the world right now, and you can write about that with these topics. So be topical, stay on point, and show up every day. Show up every single day. Cannot emphasize this enough, folks. Every single day. I know it's tough. Like, ah, I'm not feeling it today. I don't want to post. 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 
doesn't matter what, post. Just get your name out there and keep it out there. Because the more you post, the more followers you're gonna get. The more followers you're gonna get, the more connections you're gonna get. And then the more connections. And then the more eyeballs. And it's just a numbers game. That's all it is. The more eyeballs are on your profile, that now looks great because you got the cool banner and you got the headline and you got all this great stuff. The more people see that, and the more visible you are, the more job opportunities you're going to get. You can take that to the bank. And if I'm wrong, one of the recruiters here, please correct me. But it is a, it is a numbers game, folks. Get out there. And this is the easiest thing to do. It, it takes very little effort. But the payoff is magnificent. Now, number three, and I know we're running a little bit over time, so I'm going to this one quickly. But I think we've covered most of this before. Sell your story. Now, you've gotten in front of people now. you got all these thousands of eyeballs on your profile. We're cooking now. We're rolling. All right, we got a following. People are reaching out to you. You've got your interview. Congratulations. Now, how do we close? I want you to think about your interview as a road trip. <clears throat> Excuse me. Think about it as a road trip from New York to L.A. It's a long, long, long road trip. I mean, actually, just getting from one part of LA to the other is basically takes the exact same amount of time, but uh, it's a massive road trip. And this is ultimately where you're at. You begin going into the interview and you want to end with you getting a great reception from the person who interviewed you. That's, that's ultimately what this is. Not what is the road itself? The road is your story. And you want to stay on that road because a whole lot of things are going to try to detour you along the way. You're going to be asked a lot of difficult questions. You're going to be asked awful questions. And I know you've all been asked awful questions in interviews before. You're going to be asked all kinds of these scenario questions. You're going to be asked, what's your greatest weakness? I say chocolate, but you know, nobody ever likes that answer. <laughs> You're going to be asked questions that are going to try to derail you from the road and try to give you a flat tire and try to get you caught in a tornado somewhere and get you, get you stuck in a ditch and then a whiteout and all these different things that can derail your road trip. Friends, the best way to deal with those questions is to get back on the road. And what's the road? Your story. If you get asked, what's your greatest weakness? Boom, you've already had an answer. And what's your answer? Your adversity that you overcame in that job. I wasn't good at this before. I had a problem with this before, but this is what I did to correct it and improve, and this is how I accomplished it. Boom, you have the answer to your greatest weakness question. It's already baked into the cake of your story. When someone asks you, what would you do in this scenario? Scenario questions are tough, right? Well, not anymore, they're not, because you get right back on the road. You get right back on the road. The road is your story. What is your story? Oh, you know what? I'll tell you what I would do here because this is what I already did at this company in a similar situation. The more you dig into your own story, the more you know your story, the more you dig back into what you've done, the easier it's going to be to answer any question that comes your way in an interview. Get right back on the road and stay on the road. And if you stay on that road with that compelling story, you're going to be in a good place. So remember, no matter what they throw at you, and they're going to throw a lot at you. People try to get cute about this sometimes. But they're trying to really separate the wheat from the chaff here. They're trying to figure out, okay, who can tell me a compelling story that is a great answer to this question? This is how you do it. You bring it back to your accomplishments, how you overcame adversity. And then, how does that benefit them? So I, I overcame this, I achieved this, and that's why it's going to help your company do this. One, two, three. I overcame, I achieved, I will help you. Overcame, achieved, helped you. And suddenly you become the hero of their story. And those are the people who get callbacks. Those are the people who get reference checks. And that, my friends, is how you close. That is how you sell your story. You know it, you tell it to draw them in, and then you sell it in that interview. You sell it by staying on the road, staying true to your story, and letting them know how that story is going to benefit them. So with that, I give it back over to our gracious leaders. Thank, Thank you, you, Jeff. Thank you so much. Um, would you do us a favor, and you may have already done this, but would you also drop your contact information in yes. the um, chat box? So good. I was actually 
making LinkedIn updates on my profile as you were talking. So I was like, oh, this is so such good stuff. So um, thank you for that. Uh, really appreciate your time today. And Jeff will, be on the, Jeff will be on the line for a while. Um, if you guys have questions, feel free to message him, drop it in the yep. chat. And um, really, really powerful morning. Thank you so much, Jeff, for spending some time with us today. My pleasure. My, uh, my LinkedIn URL is in the chat. So please feel free to, to, I don't know why the actual URL itself is popping up, but copy paste, connect with me. I'd love to connect with all of you. Let's build our networks together. I will comment on your content to get you more visibility. Let's comment on each other's stuff to get us all more visibility. Let's get you out there. Let's get eyeballs on every single one of your profiles and let's get you all jobs sooner than later. So when the Labor Day weekend barbecues come around, we all have something to celebrate. That's right. <laughs> we can maybe go out of the house and really have fun and celebrate. Yes. Well, actually, well, for those of you in Arizona, the indoor barbecues on Labor Day weekend when it's still 115 <laughs> degrees. So, um, All right. So we are going to move on now and um, invite our hiring companies to speak. And so the first company we have is Dexcom. Monica Brown is part of the talent acquisition team. And she joined Dexcom just two months ago. She's excited to be part of this amazing organization. She's a native of Mesa but just moved back after, after living in California and Tennessee the past 12 years. She's been in recruiting both on the staffing and corporate recruiting uh, sides. And for the past 12 years, she's done manufacturing, produ production, professional services, engineering, and medical industries. She loves meeting people and helping them find new and fulfilling careers. So please help me welcome Monica Brown. Hi, thank you so much, Jessica. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for your time today. Um, yes, I am so excited to be here. Um, I am new to the talent acquisition team at Dexcom and I have joined an amazing company um, who really is changing the lives of, of people that deal with diabetes. Um, and so let's see here. Are we able to start my slideshow? Let's see here. Yep, you should just be able to click on the bottom left. Oh, there we go. I'm sorry. There's the box. Sorry, everybody. Oh. All right. Let's get started. Okay. So we are actually headquartered in San Diego and we start started in 1999. Um, like I mentioned, we help the diabetic um, people in the world with wearing these small continuous glucose monitoring systems. So they are small sensors that they wear on their bodies and every five minutes they're able to get a reading of where their blood sugar levels are at. So this beats the traditional way of uh, pricking the finger and getting the blood um, because that wasn't incredibly accurate. I'm sure we all know somebody with diabetes and it, uh, you know, your, your blood sugar level can change so quickly, just minute to minute. Um, and so with that, you know, we, we have better outcomes for our patients, you know, parents with small children that have diabetes, they're better able to monitor them. Um, we have partnered up with Apple and Google and, um, so people get the, the readings sent to their Apple Watches and we have apps and, and all of those good things with all of our latest technology. Um, in Mesa, we, we have been operating in Mesa for the past three years and we started with about 200 people in Mesa and at this time we have a thousand employees. So we have had tremendous growth over the past few years. Uh, we also have been focusing on our global growth uh, we just opened up a site in the Philippines. We're also in Malaysia. And in total, we have about 5,000 employees worldwide now. So we actually have outgrown our Mesa facility. We're right on the 60 and the Dobson Road exit. We just purchased a couple new buildings in East Mesa, right off of the 202 and uh, Power Road. So we'll be moving some of our quality team over there and some of our uh, warehousing team members over there as well. Um, and so, yeah, we, we have a lot going on right now, which is very, very exciting. Um, as far as our company goes, we have a very welcoming environment. Um, we, 
we like to have a good time together at work. Um, we like to have fun. We like to laugh. Uh, we are extremely hardworking, though. We take a lot of pride in the products we're making and the fact that we are saving people's lives. Um, also, we, as you can imagine, with the, the world events taking place, uh, diversity and inclusion is huge at the forefront of everybody's minds. And we do have several groups in place between San Diego and Mesa where we are focusing on specific groups and action items to, to make sure DNI is a big deal for Dexcom. Um, it's a fast paced environment as, as you can imagine with all of the growth we have had. Um, you know, with that comes some growing pains but we're working through it um, and uh, it is very fast paced, especially with the technology we're building things change so quickly that um, that's just the environment, the nature of our environment. Um, we are a state of the art manufacturing site. So all of our equipment is automated, semi-automated and robotic assembly. So if you're involved in manufacturing, we have the latest and greatest technology and you get to learn all of that when you work with us. So it's, it's very exciting. Um, also with with all of our growth, um, we do have a lot of opportunity for the moving up into the next step in your career. So after you are in a role for six months, you are able to then apply for that next level or another opportunity outside of your team. Um, and so we do welcome that. We love promoting within. And so there is a lot of opportunity to grow with, with us. As far as our benefits go, we have some great medical coverage. We partner up with United Healthcare. Um, something very unique about our company is that your healthcare premiums uh, is dependent upon your salary level. So if you are making less on the salary scale, your premiums are lower. If you're making more, if you're more at that director level, senior manager level, your premiums are higher. So we try to help balance that healthcare costs dependent upon what you're making. Um, we have a 401k package with the company matching at 50% up to 5% contribution. We have sick pay, paid time off. When you're an employee with us, you also have access to stock options at 15% below price. Our stock has been doing incredible. It's been growing at record speeds. And so that is a huge bonus when you work with us. We also do floating holidays. Um, we encourage work-life balance. We do have, for most shifts, since we are manufacturing, our shifts are 5 a.m. to 5 p.m. or 5 p.m. to 5 a.m. And you work Sunday, Monday, Tuesday with every other Wednesday or Thursday, Friday, Saturday with every other Wednesday. So one week you work three days, the next it's four days. Um, so that way you have opportunity to, to live life outside of work. Um, and again, just a wonderful team. I have been so blessed to be a part of my team. Um, and I know, you know, all the other teams kind of feel the same. It's, it's kind of like family. Um, we are all about team mentality, team first. How can you promote the people that are underneath you? How are you helping your team to grow? Um, these are very important principles uh, with Dexcom. So we have probably about 60 to 70 openings right now. Like I said, we are incredibly busy. Um, yes, the pandemic has, you know, thrown a wrench, as you can imagine, but we are still very, very busy, um, all due to growth. So these are some of our positions right now. Um, we have an EHS safety engineer opening. We have various levels of quality inspectors available, a senior manager, manufacturing of automation, engineering technicians, various levels two, three, and four. You're, you're assisting the engineering team with our equipment. Uh, manufacturing associates, these are the people that are working on our assembly lines and various levels there as well. We have levels one, two, three, and four, four being leads for your leading teams of about 15 assemblers. Industrial engineer openings, 
uh, manufacturing uh, manager for training. We have warehouse distribution supervisors uh, available, senior industrial engineer for our analytics and simulation team. We have a senior production controller for operations, various supervisor manufacturing. Uh, we, we have a few of those openings for both first shift and second shift. As a supervisor, if you do work that second shift, there is a 10% shift differential, as we know that that is a sacrifice to work that 5 p.m. to 5 a.m. shift. Uh, senior manager of facilities, senior manager of manufacturing. We also have various process analyst openings. If you know anybody that has an industrial engineering degree and is getting started down that path of industrial engineering, these process analyst roles are great for candidates like that. So there are a couple ways to apply. Um, first being our, our website, it's careers.dexcom.com. You will then select the MESA location. Uh, you can also send me your resume directly. My email address is right there, monica.brown at dexcom.com. You can also call me at my cell phone. You can text message me. Um, also, we are very active on Facebook. We do have a Dexcom careers page. If you're in the Mesa area, you may have seen me post in various groups about our openings. Um, I'm trying to stay very active on that Facebook page. Um, so if you are on Facebook, you can definitely like our Dexcom career page and then have access to all of the openings on Facebook if that is more your speed of how you connect technology wise. Um, but I would love to hear from you. So if you have any questions or just want to reach out, if none of these openings fit your background, but you might still be interested in connecting with us as a company for anything down the road. I am available for any of that as well. Um, I love to network. I love to connect. Um, so feel free to reach out. Even if you don't see a posting that matches your background right now, you can still reach out to me at any time. Thank you, Monica. Um, really appreciate I love how accessible you are to people. So thank you so much. And um, I know you're going to stick around for a few minutes too. So if you guys have any questions for her, uh, go ahead and drop them in the chat or reach out to her directly. Um, and thanks. Thanks for being here. I love that benefit of the sliding scale for insurance premiums. That's a unique one, a new one. Yes, yes. And, oh, I also forgot we have tuition reimbursement. I'm sorry, I didn't put that on there. So full tuition reimbursement. So that is great. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for thank being you. here today. Lots of great jobs posted. So awesome. All right. We are going to move over to uh, Laura Lynn and Pam Farling. I'd like to introduce them um, with ADP. Laura Lynn is the Division Vice President and General Manager for the ADP's Tempe location. And she oversees the, oversees the engagement and productivity of teams in that office, along with providing opportunities for career growth and development and community outreach. She's a board member with the Greater Phoenix Chamber of Commerce and um, the Commerce Foundation, ASU Career and Professional Development, and GCU College of Business Advisory Board. She's actually been at ADP since 1995, 94 and has over 25 years experience. Um, she located to Arizona in 2017 from Southern Cal with her husband and two children, and they love to spend time traveling um, with her family and watching her children play competitive soccer and baseball. She is joined today by Pam. Uh, Pam has been in the Valley for four years now and she moved from Ohio, go Bucks! <laughs> Sorry, I said that, <laughs> with, my, uh, with her husband and uh, they currently have three dogs. She's been at ADP for 10 years, supporting several locations, mostly in Tempe currently. Um, she has been recruiting all levels of positions from entry level to senior leadership enjoys baking, watching movies, and sitting outside on a cool night, and loves Sedona. So they also, this is interesting, they also, her and her husband also started a garden when the pandemic hit. So um, it started off really strong, and now it's just too hot, <laughs> but they're working on it. So please help me welcome Pam and Laura Lynn to our call today. Hello. Great. Thank you so much, Jessica. Pam and I are very excited to be here to uh, not only share information about ADP, but also all of the uh, different positions that we have available with ADP. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah. 
Okay, great, thanks. I was getting a little feedback. So, um, so ADP is just a fantastic company. I, as Jessica shared, and thanks Jessica for such a warm welcome. As Jessica shared, I've been with ADP for 26 years. And uh, the question that I get a lot is, why do you stay at ADP for so long? And really it's the people and the culture. It's um, a very inclusive uh, and diverse culture. We celebrate our diversity. We celebrate our associates. We celebrate a lot of our accomplishments. And what I also love is our leadership is incredibly engaged with all of our associates. We're, um, we make decisions on the associate and client experience as we are you know, moving forward with strategy and planning for our company. I'm one of the senior leaders at ADP, and as the general manager at our Tempe location, um, I am very connected with our associates and our teams um, when we are in the building, uh, which right now, you know, given the COVID situation, many of us are working from home. Uh, but when we are all together, I'm actively involved and engaged. Um, our senior leadership across the globe are very engaged with our associates. And uh, when they are visiting various offices, they enjoy really just sitting down and talking with the people and hearing directly from those associates who are working with our clients. Um, many of the positions that we have in our Tempe location are working directly with our clients, either implementing our solutions and technology or servicing our clients. So the different positions that are available, and Pam's gonna talk a little bit more about that, really is working uh, with clients on the technology and the solutions for the human capital management area. So when we talk about human capital management, many of you may know ADP from seeing the logo on check stubs. A lot of companies use ADP to process their payroll, but we go far beyond payroll. Um, we encompass benefits, retirement solutions, time and attendance, performance, so working with our clients can cover a wide range of solution sets um, to help support them. So we like to say that we offer services to companies to help support their employees from hiring them to retiring them. Uh, so a lot of different um, opportunities within ADP. We are a global company. We have about 58,000 associates globally. Um, we have several large locations in the United States. And our Tempe location is one of those. And what's great about these large locations, it allows associates to develop and grow within their careers. Um, great opportunity to explore various avenues within ADP. We have multiple bi different business units in our Tempe location uh, that allows associates for collaboration, growth, development, um, as I mentioned earlier, um, our focus on associates is very strong and we really celebrate each associate um, and you know, ensure that our associates bring their authentic selves to work and continue to grow and develop. Um, I wanna mention around our community involvement as well. So we're very focused on supporting our communities and we have many different ways that our different groups within ADP um, really connect with the communities, whether it be from um, a diversity aspect, um, a social responsibility aspect, or any just type of community engagement. We have many different um, employee resource groups at ADP um, and in Tempe, we have nine different ones, truly celebrating the diversity of our associates. And those groups not only focus on the development of our associates, but allyship um, amongst different groups and, and different types of associates and also paying back to the community. So um, the opportunities at ADP goes beyond just you know being part of a team doing your day-to-day -day job it really encompasses being part of a much larger team uh, and that allows you to develop grow um, and participate in many different activities uh, both for yourself and within our community overall so I am going to move forward here there we go uh, so what's really great about ADP 
is we are recognized by many different um, groups being a strong employer of choice. So you'll see here a number of the different awards that we've won. Um, I've been at ADP for, it's been quite a while, uh, and I would agree with all of these awards. I find that um, they're definitely well earned, but what is really important is the feedback from our associates. And we do culture surveys regularly, and we really do get very strong feedback from our associates. Um, as you can imagine, we also get some areas that we want to continue to focus on and improve, which is great because um, the way that we become strong is feedback from our associates and helping ensure that we're delivering what they need so that we can support our clients the best way possible as well. Um, so it really is collectively a great place to work um, and grow your career, grow yourself as a person. Um, these awards demonstrate that, but also just in general, we really do get great feedback from our associates as well. So thanks so much for the opportunity. I'm going to now pass it off to Pam, pass this off to Pam. Pam, I'll move the slide forward uh, for you uh, to share a little bit more about the benefits of working at ADP. Yes, thank you, Laurelyn. Can everyone hear me okay? Yes. Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, so uh, our culture, we uh, have work-life balance. Uh, we have teamwork. So when we are in the office, we have um, little collaborative cube areas, um, like to work together as teams. We, as Laura Lynn has already talked about, have on-site events and celebrations. Um, diversity organizations, the business resource groups that she uh, spoke on. And then within our career growth and development, we have um, Standout, which is uh, you can check in weekly with uh, your leader. We have recognition and awards. We have community involvement. So uh, within ADP, uh, moving your career, you can go lateral, you can move up different positions um, across the board. Um, and then some of the benefits that we have, we do have some stock opportunities, uh, 401k match program. Uh, we ha actually have a leave policy for new parents. We have wellness program where you get some points, which then go towards um, a discount towards your, uh, your um, I guess, benefits. Um, and then HSA match, uh, we have a tuition reimbursement program. Uh, with our health insurance, uh, we actually have different programs depending on what you, you know, need for your family. And those are actually effective starting on your first day of work. Um, and then our PTO, you get two weeks to, um, when you first start. And then after three years, it will, you'll add another week. And then if you can move forward, please, Lauren. Um, and so we are ramping up our hiring um, in our Tempe location. So these are just some of the uh, positions we have available. Uh, anything from your client support consultant, which is answering the phone, helping clients, um, to some sales roles, manager, and then we're just going to continue building our team. So you can um, always check out our website as well. Yeah, and just really quick, we have multiple opportunities with each of these positions as well. So multiple roles under each position. These are some great jobs, you guys. Thank you so much, both of you, Laura Lynn and Pam, for being here today. We really appreciate it. Um, we've been working with ADP for a couple years now, and so a really well-respected um, and great company to work for in the Phoenix area. Um, and you guys are in Tempe, we're filling Tempe right now. So anyway, thanks again for being here. The ladies will stick around for just a few minutes. And if you have any questions for them, feel free to hop on and ask. Thank you. All right, we are going to um, just spend the next couple minutes here uh, going over some resources that we have. And let's see if, take the, um, Sheila, you want me to take it? Oh, there we go. There we go, okay. Sheila is getting ready. If you don't know this yet, Sheila's like the right-hand person that makes all this happen. <laughs> She's amazing. <laughs> but um, she is going to launch an evaluation, a, a short poll. There's going to be four questions. They'll pop up one at a time. We really, really, really appreciate your feedback. 
Um, because we can't hand out full evaluations, this really gives us some, some stuff to go off of. So they're just, they're just quick, um, yes, no. Once you answer, it'll go away. Also, if you have any additional feedback for Jeff or our hiring companies or for us, um, feel free to email us at contact at careerconnectors.org. Uh, you can even drop it in the chat. We, we keep the chats and review them as well. So go ahead and do that. Um, so you can email us or with your feedback. We also like to know what topics you guys are interested in. And uh, so we would love to hear that from you as well. Even companies, if you are interested in some companies and you're having a hard time making a connection, uh, we would love to invite them out to speak. All right, these are many of our partners that we work with uh, all around um, Arizona and more now. And so if you are, uh, whoop, I'm just gonna go back real quick so they can see the partners. Um, whoops. So many of them are hiring and they are, oops, I'm sorry, you guys, I'm having a little problem here. Well, so anyway, I'll tell you some of them. USAA, um, U-Haul, Freedom Financial Network, State Farm, all um, hiring right now. And so those are great companies. If you are interested in working for any of them, connect with them on LinkedIn. And you can also connect with them directly um, through an email or um, when they present with us. So a lot of times they'll present with us as well. Um, Sheila, will you take me back a couple slides? I'm not sure why it's I think it's because I have some, so, oh wait, maybe I have it now. Oh, there we go. I have it now. Yay. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay. We have a new program. If you were here last week, you heard Christy Staub speak. And um, so she is do doing a career landing workshop series. And she asked me if it would be okay if um, she was able to showcase this with you guys. Um, we don't normally uh, promote a program that has a fee associated with it because we do a lot of stuff at no cost. But Christy and I have been working together for 10 years and she is phenomenal at what she does. So she has a discounted program available, you and your future, it starts now. Um, she's offering scholarships to Career Connectors people. And so I'm dropping in the chat the, um, the link to her, uh, it didn't it, it did link, so I'll make sure to go back and link that. There you go. You can, thanks Michelle. You can click on that. There is a scholarship option that will reduce the price by half. Um, and so if you are interested in being part of that program, go ahead and register with her that way and you can um, get access to her program and her coaching. And I've seen her work with hundreds of candidates helping them through the process of career change. Okay, we also have this opportunity with bestcompaniesaz.com. We have created a website for when COVID hit. We came together and we created this website. And then what it is is verified companies that are hiring right now. We have 65 listed on the top section and these are companies that we have verified their jobs and they are hiring. I know ADP is listed on there. I believe we also have Dexcom on there as well. And so they, they have links directly to their websites and their um, jobs job boards. On the bottom half is additional companies that are hiring in Arizona that we have partnered with Arizona at Work. So Arizona at Work has um, ver verified these companies. But the top, top 65 are ones that we work with um, all the time. So uh, you can go to that website, bestcompaniesaz or backslash resources. All right, a couple other things here. If you are um, interested, we have a DISC assessment available for you. And so you can go to our website and do careerconnectors.org backslash DISC. That's the direct website. And you can take that. It's about, it's free. And it's about 24 pages. It'll give you a lot of good content on your um behavioral style, your work, um, ideal work environment. And so it's really good to incorporate as you're answering questions on your interview. You can also use some of the verbiage and put it onto your resume. Now today, a lot of great contact from, content from Jeff. And if you didn't capture it all, there's two ways that you can review this information. First of all, we're doing a blog. We blog every event. And so you can see Go to this page and look at our recaps from, oh my gosh, we go back all the way probably seven or eight years, but you can see all of the event recap blogs, all the companies that have been hiring and have been here recently, and then the content. And so 
go to our blog that will be up usually within two to three days we get the current event up so it will be friday or uh, monday morning we'll have the current this event up you can also look at it on our website so this whole webinar and virtual event today will be posted on our website um, in a, later today then um, the ways you can connect with us are through our social media as well and we're on facebook linkedin instagram and twitter um, we're, we have a great group on LinkedIn. So if you have not joined that group, I encourage you to head out there and do that. All right, here is what we have coming up. Wade Thomas is coming back. Ready, reset, go, and finding the right career. We are doing these events through September every Wednesday morning at 9 a.m. Um, Pacific Standard Time. And so Wade Thomas will be here. I keep calling this time the great reset. And so if you feel like all right, we're in a reset time. He is going to talk about that and how you can find the right career. Uh, Greg Gaines, Beyond the Elevator speech, uh, is on August 12th. We're working on the 19th on that topic. And then our hiring companies, you will see at, uh, in your email on Monday mornings is when we send out the update on the hiring companies. So those will all be listed. We know about CarMax will be there on August 12th, uh, but the rest will be listed in your email. All right, these are the three ways we are getting information out right now. Uh, on the left, this is our homepage. If you are not subscribed to our emails, careerconnectors.org, you can sign up for our emails. If you registered for today's event, then you will start to get our emails Monday mornings. I have a career chat I'm doing a couple times a week. Uh, so you can go, you can take a look at those. They're three to five minutes of job tips, um, unemployment guidance, uh, updates on what's coming up with the, um, the new plan for unemployment and PPP and et cetera. So all of that, uh, the stimulus fund, the stimulus plan. So it hasn't been announced just so you know, um, hasn't been approved the next stimulus funding yet, but uh, we're hoping this week we'll have something. But those are in there, the career chats. We do interviews with various people in the community and um, they have resources that companies that are hiring different kind of um, opportunities. And so you can look in our community update. And then our full webinar, this event every Wednesday morning is posted on our website. Usually we get it up by the same, you know, the afternoon of the same day. And so uh, all of our events that have been virtual since March, end of March are posted on that site and you can look there. Thank you so much to our awesome volunteers. We couldn't do this without you. We appreciate you. We have an arsenal of coaches and resume writers and, um, and then people behind the scenes that are making this happen. So you guys are awesome. This is the virtual clap. <laughs> Thank you so much. And then I just wanted to end this with something you guys I've been thinking about. And actually, as Jeff was saying, you know, talking about your story and I need to go out and update my LinkedIn profile, but you know, I just want to share one little thing to close this out. Um, in 2009, my family was dramatically affected by the recession of 2008 and 9, the Great Recession. And so I had closed a business. Uh, I was running a staffing firm and the entire industry that I was staffing for was closed down. My husband was a recruiter and he was laid off three times in six months. Uh, at the same time, my business shut down. And so we went through, personally went through a significant change in our life with um, job loss. We short sold our dream home. Um, we were renting a home and the owners weren't paying the mortgage. So that went into foreclosure and into auction while we were living there. Um, and our kids at the time, we had an infant, a two year old and a 10 year old. So, you know, that was a really, really difficult time in our life. But I continue to say, this time in the pandemic, I have been calling the great reset. And if you feel like I can't get off of the floor right now, I'm in the pit. It, I don't know what to do. I'm frustrated. I'm, I don't feel hope. I am telling you there is hope. I am telling you, you've got, if you don't believe it, you've got to borrow my belief. There is hope. There is a step forward. If that recession would not have happened to him, if that, if, if we were not affected by the recession in the way we were affected, our lives would look completely different. I can honestly tell you from the bottom of my heart, I am completely grateful that we lost our jobs, that we had to move, that we had to have a mental reset. Um, I was able to launch two businesses, one being this nonprofit organization that has helped over 40,000 people. 
And I'm telling you, it's not about going, launching new work, launching new businesses. If that's what you're called to do, then go do it. But there is hope and it's coming. You've just got to stay the course. We are so grateful you are all here today. <clears throat> we are praying for you and we will continue to pray for you that you land into the career of your dreams. Thanks for being here.